Hi, and welcome to another Lorenzo's Music Podcast. I'm Tom Ray. On today's show, I talked to a musician that was actually suggested to me by another musician that I had on the podcast a few weeks ago. This person is in several bands. I actually find out at the very end that they're even in way more bands than this. I joke about the fact that the person that recommended them was also like in 12 projects. It has something to do with the town they live in. They're down in Illinois. But uh, this person plays in a band that is sort of a, he calls it punk rock, but we kind of discuss like, it's a little bit more than that. It's a little bit more nuanced. And then he's in another band that he kind of, they give a nod to professional wrestling in a sense, in the way that they act, their demeanor, the, 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 I guess they have personas. (laughs) We talk more about that. And then a third act that is, kind of a punk emo act that he's releasing an album with uh, very soon. But he's also releasing another album with another act. He's he's doing a lot of stuff. And he's also playing live shows. And we talk more about his live shows, how he books those gigs, how he's finding these places to play with all these bands and managing that. And uh, it's just a fun conversation. So uh, here it is starting right now. I'm uh, Alex Gerard. I play music. I've been playing uh, guitar for about 26 years. I've been playing live for about 16, and I am in too many bands. But <laughs> it's a good way to stay busy. Yeah, and that is a- so. I was actually told about you by another person that I had on the podcast before, uh, uh, Stephen Robinson. Yeah, yeah, and and he told me about your stuff, and he was uh, telling me that our our styles are probably more in the same genre. Like I spoke to him just because I found his stuff online and I thought it was really cool. And he was just, he had heard some of our stuff and said, you know, you should talk to this guy. And I went and checked out your stuff. And yes, first let's get into the bands that you're in. So as far as I know, you are in No Robot, um, Cocaine Cargo Pants, which I love the name of that band, and Escape Rope. Those are the ones that I know about. So tell me about those bands first of all. Well, uh, No Robot is is the longest running band. We're actually doing our ten year anniversary show this year. Wow! Um, which more and more of a, a task than I realized. Uh, the more I think about it, uh, you don't see too many bands stick it out that long. Um, hey, and I've uh, been doing it since the '90s. So, <laughs> oh wow! Well, that that's amazing. That's great. Yeah, yeah. It's hard to find people to work with for that long. You know, that's a big thing you realize playing music is like the music ends up being a lot uh, less important in a way as, as much as all the other stuff around you that kind of goes into playing, being in a band. Like the music kind of comes easy. Thankfully, a lot of times I, I tend to find, but finding people to work with can be a real, a real uh, problem sometimes. So I'm yeah. lucky to have worked with some real good guys and uh, been going out for 10 years in that band. It's kind of a rock band. Uh, we went through a lot of changes, kind of a jam rock band, six piece. Oh, okay. Uh, lost about half the members uh, back in 2015, 2016. And we've been kind of like a three piece ever since then. Went through a bit of a funk phase. And now okay. we're kind of entering a bit more of a, a punk rock uh, phase. Or at least I'd, I'd like to make some more high energy, less jammy to the point stuff, you know? Well, and I would say, because I've, I've heard it, and I wouldn't even, it's, it's punk rock and it's more, po- not even post punk. It's got, it's got depth to it, but yet at the same time, it is punk. It's got the energy, but it's, and I don't want to say alternative, but it's got, it's got layers to it. It's a little bit more nuanced than just saying what people think straight up punk is. And, you know, like the, the knee jerk reaction to what punk is, people think either one version or another version, you've got your power punk, uh, you know, arena albums and then you've got your punk rock like noise like they can kind of play guitar sort of punk rock ver- and you've got more than both of those is what i'd say from no robot listening to it and like i said the like the latest ep that you have is uh yeah it's it's got more layers and like it even kind of subtly goes into the songs and things like that so i get the punk but yeah there's another name for it i i don't know what, what that would be 
one of my one of my favorite bands is uh is the Meat Puppets. I actually okay. got a poster right here. Um, nice. They uh they're they were on like SST, they toured a lot with Black Flag. They get lumped mm-hmm. into some of that uh eighties post hardcore stuff or whatever. And yeah. uh and they're like they play like a lot of like country, a lot of weird kind of stuff, kinda of layered stuff like that too. Um so I might be borrowing a lot from that in that too. And it's, I yeah. don't know, it is, it is like a weird, like being in so many bands and writing uh, songs, you know, some, some things work for some bands, something work for others. It's an interesting box. What goes into the no robot um, stuff, a lot of, a lot of blues, a lot of funk, a lot of jam, but I've also just been trying to get more, just some more high energy stuff in there. We played a house show last night for our friend, Bridget, yeah, we're we're a bit more of a bar band, a bit more of like uh, we'll play like the town events stuff like that. Mm-hmm. Um, so it was nice getting into a house show and seeing seeing people react real energetically to stuff. And I just kind of want to keep chasing that with uh, with that band and keep moving forward in that direction. I think. How often does No Robot play out? It's been a little bit less over over the years, just because we're getting older, people getting more uh with work and family and stuff but yeah. uh we try to keep a bit of a healthy schedule uh this year we've only played maybe three or four shows and we have about three or four more planned okay um, so that's that's also can be the impetus for all the other bands is to keep my my weekends busy and stuff you know yeah and, and we'll elaborate more on those i i just realized yeah the other bands so let's talk about the next one that i mentioned cocaine cargo pants first of all How'd you come up with the name? Because it's it, that's awesome. Well, that is that is just our Instagram handle. The name the name of the band is the Dusty Lemons, which does have an oh. interesting backstory behind that. Okay. Uh, so I don't know. Are you familiar at all with? Um, have you heard of Brandon Cattle and the Branding Irons at all? No, I don't think I have. Uh, it's another band from around here that uh, I played with. Uh, the drummer for No Robot also played with. He's the one who got me to join up and. Um, it's a bit of like a cow punk, like country punk kind of feel to it. Um, and a bit of professional wrestling to it too. Um, okay. There's a lot more thought put kind of into your, uh, your stage presence. And like, we, we do a lot of bits and like, you come up with like a name and you, you put on like a whole shtick with it. It, it was like, kind of like an act. That made it a lot of fun. Like, to, you know, you didn't really, again, didn't really worry a lot about the music. It came easy. I like the songs. They're great songs and stuff that Brandon wrote. But there was, like, a lot of other stuff that kind of went into it that made it more interesting and unique. And I think a lot of people gravitated to, to that. Um, I think that's important with a band sometimes, too, to, like, to grow in, in those ways. Because, like, people aren't always going to be into the music exactly the same way you are. It's not like uh, we're not all going to be like out there, like the Grateful Dead, just like with a huge massive cult following of people who are like interpreting yeah. lyrics and stuff. But uh, sometimes you can like have a little bit of a party around the band, build some other intrigue with just some stupid stuff. Like, uh, like I said, it's a bit of pro wrestling. So Brandon will, great thing he does is he'll use real life stuff and kind of just integrate it into whatever the show is going to be. What uh, do you mean by real life stuff? Like lyrically, or are you saying physically using things from real life? Like what is, what is that? Well, well kind of like situationally. So like he, one thing with his band is he, he wrote it so that anyone can play a lot of his stuff. It's like he'll, hmm. he's the main guy, but then he can have a rotating cast of characters. So when I joined, it was because they lost another guitar player and he kind of, you know, they, they basically like the entry and exit from the band, like just band drama that's like just really heightened like stuff. Like, uh, so for instance, once I joined up, uh, me and, and Toads and uh, the drummer from No Robot, he was in the band. Um, we had to go play a festival down in Arkansas with No Robot the yeah. same day that there's a Brandon Cattle gig. And he was like, well, go play, you know, like that was, a, it was a big opportunity for us to play this. Like it was like a national festival. We won some battle of the bands to win. And, uh, and Brandon's like, go play that show and I'll get some guys to fill in. But then in the meantime, he just made up 
you know, made a video saying that we were fired and we're like a bunch of no good, you know, dirt bags because in that band, we're just kind of, you know, we, we height, we play up like that. We're kind of like just drunk, skeezy, like punk. So that's know? the pro wrestling element that you're talking about. Yeah. Yeah. I was wondering how that came into play. All right. So like, <laughs> so my, my name was dusty rivers. I came up with a whole thing. My name was dusty rivers. Did you ever watch pro wrestling? A little bit, yeah. Like as a kid, when I was ten, I remember watching like WCW and and so you, and you, yeah. you're you're familiar then with Dusty Rhodes. Oh yeah, yeah. Okay, just checking. All right. Well, uh, the thing, my dad actually played in a band uh, named Dusty Rivers back in the day. Oh. And I just thought I thought it would be like the whole thing just kind of seemed really apropos, you know, like, um, so it it was real uh, serendipitous, and that way I could pay a little bit of tribute to that and still like a little wink nod to the pro wrestling and yeah uh, no i like that toad's name in the band was lemon joe so when we got fired his name's already toad (laughs) i know it's it's, it's really perfect you know already like um but when he got we both got we had to play that gig in arkansas so brandon was like yeah these boys have been fired they ran off they're a bunch of like drunk like cokeheads like they, they're not going to make the gig. I hired these other guys. So then we joked that we should form a band called the Dusty Lemons. Mm-hmm. And it was just kind of a, a joke. And then our friend uh, Bridget, who throws on tons of shows around here in town, Bridget Lance, um, she, uh, she was like, well, why don't you play the show I'm putting together? And I'm like, well, we're not really a band. We don't have any songs, but sure, we'll do it. So we wrote a couple songs in a couple weeks. We did a couple covers. And that band just kind of came together. And it was, and again, it was just like a big bit. Like, we're just uh, making jokes the whole time. We're like, uh, yeah. you know, we don't got anything for sale. We don't got any merch, but we do have some stuff for sale behind the building after the show. If you want to come <laughs> say hi or get high when we're done playing here. Like, shit like that. Just set, making nice. dumb little jokes. And I'd wear a shirt that say, like, fight the police or... Uh, legalized cocaine. I saw like that, that one. I saw that one. And that's actually <laughs> a funny Instagram post where you're doing the thing with the nose. Um, and I just realized too, when you said a person who books shows around here, I never asked you, where are you located? <laughs> oh yeah. I'm in um, Bloomington, Illinois. Uh, Bloomington, Bloomington Illinois. Okay. Yeah, same as, uh, same as uh, Stephen Robinson. Yeah. Okay. And then uh, now going back to what you were saying before, one question I did have was you <coughs> said his band is set up so that, anybody can just step in and play. How is, how is it that he's writing music so that anybody can just kind of fill in? What, what is he doing that actually makes that a easy concept? Well, the, no, the songs aren't too complicated, you know, he like, okay. and I think he does that on purpose. Like he's a real, he's a real thoughtful guy. Brandon is um, about like the way he goes about doing that stuff. And and that's the kind of music he likes to make. And, and it, it was pretty easy. I think I stepped in two weeks after I joined and played a, played the first show. Okay. Um, and like I said, they're all good songs, but they're just pretty easy to learn. And he kind of wants that because then he can, you know, it can be a fluid situation so that he's not kind of tied down to what, you know, he wants to do like to, to other people right. and stuff like be able to play the shows and stuff. And that way we're able to step away too. And then I can still step back into that role once yeah. we, once we play the other gig and, and he makes it, you know, he explains the rotating cast with just through silly bits and stuff. And yeah. And a lot of people seem to like that too. Um, so uh, one of, one of the bits too, one of the members of the dusty lemons is Sammy hot dogs. He's a, a man in Sammy a hot, hot dog. dogs, you said? Yeah, outfit, yeah. <laughs> quite quite the character himself. Nice. No, I just really liked that concept when you mentioned it before about the easy to learn rotating member thing. Like is it is it just uh are they similar chords on everything and is that what also makes it easier and it's just kind of like the the old model of like you just play these three chords in different orders? Yeah, it's a lot of cowboy chords. It's not it's not gotcha. a lot of like okay. Not a lot of complicated progressions, like real hooky, catchy songs that you can you can get a feel for pretty easy and stuff, you know. Huh. Um, so nothing, nothing, nothing too hard to to grasp, and uh, yeah, and it only took a uh, you know about like nine songs. You only played about thirty minutes set, so it's nothing too daunting to 
yeah. wrap your mind around, you know? No, I just really liked that concept when you mentioned, when you mentioned it and I wanted to know more about that. Okay. Well, now well, hold, you'll love this yeah, too, though, with, with the dusty lemons, one other thing art. So part of the thing too, is like, you're welcome to join up too. We're trying to, we're more of a movement than a band. We're trying to get everyone involved. I'd love to be playing shows where maybe there's only about five of us on stage playing instruments. And then we got about 15 more people around us shooting dice, hanging out, whatever. <laughs> when we, when we drop the album, we're going to get these little pamphlets made that have all of the, all of the lyrics and all the, you know, like a little chord book. So anyone playing any instrument can come up and play with us at any show because it's just a real loose, let it fly sort of thing with that band yeah. as well. So similar concept in a way where once we i'd like to publish it just so we have the songs out there under our name but then i'm just we're going to hand out these song books so anyone can just get up and play the show with us right then if you're in the crowd you know makes it sound like you're starting a cult which even adds to it more <laughs> like here's the song we, we books not and then drink this when you're done you know yeah, we're, <laughs> we're, we're not a government psyop i have had that thrown out there i just like to deny any of those uh claims <laughs> And when you mentioned that thing on the stage, I recall a band that I saw who, that did a show once. They had a guy on stage that actually, during the entire show, built a fence, a white picket fence around the entire stage as they were playing the show. He had like a, you know, he had power tools and everything on stage, and he was just building that whole thing while they were playing their show. And by That's the end, awesome. there was a, a white picket fence across the entire stage. That's so, fucking amazing. There's an that. idea for you, too. And then now, that. what about Escape Rope? Tell me about that band. So Escape Rope kind of formed um, our drummer in No Robot, Toads. I was in No Robot and Dusty Lemons both with him, and he just recently had a kid uh, back in September last year. Oh, okay. So I knew that things were going to be slowing down a lot for both of those groups, and so I wanted to start something else, and uh, – Earlier last year, uh, I went to a show with uh, my friend Bridget, and we saw this band out of Peoria called Heaving in a garage somewhere, and they were just fucking amazing. It was it was really cool, and a lot of the sound reminded me of like late '90s, early 2000s kind of rock music and stuff from like when I was in junior high, high school and stuff. Mm -hmm. When I started playing guitar and started writing stuff like songs that I, I wrote and never really did anything with. And uh, I was like, man, I got some stuff like this. Like if this is coming back around and this is kind of what's happening with these like excellent house shows and stuff, I'd like I'd love to get in on that. But I've come from more of like a blues uh, grunge background and stuff. Mm -hmm. uh, I've even added funk a little bit onto my repertoire, jam band a little bit, even though I absolutely can't stand jam bands. I've played in them before. Okay. Um, but uh, so like I, I contacted a friend of mine, uh, Kyle Holiday, and he's like, uh, he's, he's more of that world emo metal. He, he's played in tons, fronted a lot of bands like that. And I showed him some of the riffs I have. We, we demoed out some songs. We reached out to some other musicians we know that we thought would be a good fit. And the whole thing came together really quick. Um, we were getting offered gigs before we even practiced. Oh, wow. Okay. <laughs> Just because like a lot of these guys we put together play in bands around town and everyone kind of knows us and kind of trusted the process. And, uh, mm -hmm. and thankfully, too, yeah, like everyone was just so professional and uh, – season that it came together really quick we wrote um five songs and we already recorded the album just last month i think or a couple months ago now and we're hmm. uh, looking to get it mixed and mastered hopefully have that out in october and Where did it's, you record uh, it's that? like emo hardcore uh alternative punk is i guess what we're calling it is the kind of vibe of that stuff yeah i would agree with that and where did you uh record it at uh, we recorded at Tone Good Studio in Urbana with Mark Wyman. That's also where we recorded the No Robot EP. Um, Mark does great work, um, good rates. We just we knocked the No Robot EP out in a day, and we did the uh, uh, Escape Rope one in about a day and a half. Okay, nice. So. And how how are you managing all of these bands like? I can, we get together for practice 
And sometimes it'll be like, oh, we haven't played that set in like a month. How does that go again? Or, you know, how are you, how are you, <laughs> how are you remembering the different songs for not only just one band, but for three bands? So how are you, <laughs> how the hell are you doing that? I, I don't know. I mean, like that is, that is the fear a lot of times, right? You pick up your guitar, like a lot of times before shows where I'm just like, God, I hope I don't forget everything right now. Like, right. You know? Yeah. But, uh, well, with no robot, for instance, we don't practice unless we have a show. And sometimes we'll like, no. we, have, we haven't played in three months. And, uh, and we had a show last night. The first we practiced, uh, the week before, like we practiced last Sunday, a week ago, it was the first time we played in three months and right. it was pretty rough. It was pretty <laughs> rough. We were having that, like, how do you do that again? And I remember thinking like, guys, like we're going to need at least two more, like before we play the show. But then we got together, uh, you know, one more time and it sounded completely fine. And I was like, all right, well, we're good. And okay. We just play the show. And I, I don't know if it's just with that band, we've been playing for years, so even a couple months off isn't um, great, but we get through it, I guess. Okay. Um, with the dusty lemons, it's folk punk. So that's it. If that, there is no bar for that. If it sounds bad, it's even better. You know what I mean? Like <laughs> yeah. crashing and burning is like a plus with that band. You just can't right. fail. Um, and, uh, and with escape rope, that's the one we do get together uh, pretty regularly for, or try to, cause it's newer. But um, I think, you know, just like, I'm 36 now. A lot of the guys that play with are all like in our thirties and stuff and have been playing out for at least 10 years. And I think by this point we just kind of become, we're all playing regularly in some capacity. So like mm -hmm. by the time we get together, it, it clicks pretty fast and everyone's just kind of, you know, of that mindset that we don't need as much like weekly practice and we can kind of turn it on when we need to. You know, well, do you even have a home, but. do you have a set place that you do it at, or do you just kind of makeshift like where can we practice at? Because if you're not doing it that often, yeah, we do it. We do. Where it are you doing it? We got. Oh, <laughs> there's a drum set. Yeah, need to. Nice. Cool. So, uh, do the neighbors not complain? No, no. Uh, she's <laughs> the upstairs neighbor's always been great. Um, she's moving out though, so. But I think uh, I think she got engaged, so I don't think that has anything to do with me. Thankfully, <laughs> I don't know how it would. <laughs> yeah, it's a little bit worried because she hasn't said anything. But I'm always, you know, I'm always. Here's my number. Come down and have a beer. Let me know if we're being too loud. Mm -hmm. um, in the back, we got like an alley and a parking lot, and we got we got some good space and we got some good neighbors. So I haven't had any issues so far. Okay. And now how do you manage? So it's hard enough to book for one band. And you even said like, um, no robot hasn't, it hasn't really been playing out that much, but you've got three bands. How are you booking three bands or who's booking it? How are you finding these shows? Well, um, one thing is that we, I don't personally reach out for a lot of gigs. Like, and that is probably how I avoid being double booked is I don't, I don't book ahead or really contact email out for gigs that much at all. Uh, we normally get a lot of offers from venue owners, promoters, other bands we know. And then sometimes with like no robot or escape rope, uh, if one can't make it, the other might, if it's an okay fit, which is like what we did last night, escape rope was the one band asked to play, but no robot filled in and it's still kind of fit the bill. Mm -hmm. you know, pretty good. Um, but I just don't, I don't know if it's just being a little bit lazy, but it kind of works out where I just don't book ahead. I don't, I don't force it. And it really somehow ends up working out like perfectly. I need to update my, uh, my list, but I got like, uh, I got a thing. I have like dates and stuff that I try to keep full. Um, <laughs> and I normally try not to work too, you know, just a couple months ahead, but, uh, I just don't really force the issue too much. There's certain things, festivals you have to try to um, apply for at the beginning of the year. But other have than you applied that, for any of those? We applied through some things through the town. Um, we haven't been playing as many festivals around because, well, the thing like No Robot is more the festival band. Um, I would right. say like Dusty Lemons. I don't know. Anytime anyone wants to book that, I'm like are you sure? Do you know like what we do? Like <laughs> we sing songs about like killing cops and we're like 
and advocate for legalizing cocaine and stuff. Are you sure you want us in your bar? Like, it sounds like a bad idea. Like, why? Uh, no, no robots, more like a festival town band. And then escape ropes is kind of more like a house show band. Um, mm-hmm. so everything kind of fits in a different box that way too. So with no robot with, uh, with toads having a young one and, and us trying, we didn't apply too much, but maybe next year we might push more to play more festivals. Cause I have been uh, coming back around to, to the idea, you know, it's, we used to do that back in the day a lot. And, uh, we we just we've been doing more local events, you know, like when they have stuff downtown and uh, have a big stage set up, they need a band for or something. Those are kind of the gigs we've been going for. Actually, a question about that too. So I I understand the applying for it, and needing to do it ahead of time and all that. How are you finding out about these, and what do you submit when you apply? So um, a lot of a lot of it's Facebook, like they uh, the town or whoever, you know, they'll they'll post now accepting applications for like whatever uh with the town of normal is the one who does a lot of stuff specifically they have like a like a event coordinator specifically with music that we know personally Hmm. and she'll post something about you know that uh, here's your application for all of the events through town of normal this year and then it's like a Google Doc form you fill out. You check the ones you want to apply okay. for. You post your links. You like any other stuff you need. I know with the festivals, it's been a while before, but those they normally, normally those you just know to reach out. I guess probably December, January, and just email them like an electronic press kit or something. Um, yeah, where do you keep your electronic press kit at? Because you don't, I, I, or at least I haven't seen that you have a website or anything like that. So what are you using for an EPK? I mean, we've mostly just been sending out links, uh, Facebook, Spotify. I still need to update the band camp. I'm the one in charge of the socials, so I'm uh, we're in trouble with that sometimes. <laughs> I'm, a li- I'm a little bit behind. but uh, Yeah, when we were discussing, that's one of the things you were saying. You're like, I don't really do a lot of online stuff. And I'm like, isn't this your account? <laughs> oh, yeah. Yeah, it, it, it – uh, it's a lot to juggle sometimes because even with uh, even with Escape Rope, I was like, "Oh, new band! Someone else want to handle the money and the socials?" And I was like, "Nope, me again." Okay, I got it. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know. It's it's something I'm very familiar with or like uh, happy to do. But uh, I always I'm starting to realize. I guess that's what growing up is at 36, right? It's like, well, no one knows what they're doing, so I might as well be in charge of something. You know. Why not the social media? I'm an adult now. Yeah. <laughs> All right. Now the uh, the no robot release the which I love the the title of the my demise. Who or made my the, decline? Oh, my decline! Damn it! I I knew that that going in, and I knew I was going to say it wrong, and I still say it wrong. <laughs> um. So the the cover art for that first of all, who did that? Uh, our friend Derek Gruen. Uh, my mycelium art, I believe, is his Instagram. Um, yeah, he does great work. He did some uh, logos for our friends in Flaccid, maybe even an album cover for them um, back in the day. Uh, you know, we just put out a feeler asking people who wanted to do art. I didn't really want to try to chase anyone down who wasn't interested, so I, we just took some applications and. He's fantastic, so it was an easy decision to make, and I had the idea of uh, a robot destroying downtown Bloomington, Mm -hmm. so I just thought of, uh, I kind of went downtown, took some pictures, Um, I think the State Farm building and the old courthouse are kind of iconic, you kind of know that you're in downtown Bloomington when you see those, so I got an angle of that, and he put a little robot over it, and it turned out great. Huh. How long did it take them to do it? I just, it's a great art. It's a great album cover. It, it didn't take too long. You know, um, I think I got, we got the art before we even recorded the album. I think uh, we were in talks for like a month, but when he actually sat down to do it, I got him everything to do it. It just took a couple of weeks or something. Hmm. Now, when you're releasing an album, what do you, do you plan on like, okay, let's work on an album or is it just, Oh crap, we have enough songs to put together in an album. Let's let's let it like that's always even me as as a musician, it's like 
how do you decide like, yes, this is an album. We only planned out an album once. And then by the time we got to the fourth song, it was a themed album uh, of our own version of spaghetti Westerns uh, oh, type shit. music. Yeah. Oh, but yeah. it was our spin on it. So it was like us taking that concept and then like going, how would we play it? So it's, it's got that spaghetti Western feel. But by the time we got to the fourth one, it was like, all right, it's an EP now. <laughs> We've done what we're going to do with this. <laughs> yeah. I mean, that's kind of what it was for the No Robot EP was like, well, here's the collection of songs. Like, we just wanted to put something out, like have a have a project because um, some of those it was. And I guess it was all the songs we didn't have recorded. We have one previous album that um, was kind of rushed, like live recorded in a day as well, but a lot less thought put into it and mixed even than than my decline. Mm -hmm. Uh my decline, yeah, it was a collection of songs that we just didn't have recorded at the time that we wanted to have down. We wanted to have something released. And, you know, the big thing for me with, like, recording music for a long time was just money. Like, I, right. you know, I I remember, like, recording demos on, like, four-track cassette back in high school and shit. Mm -hmm. and, and, you know, maybe having a digital eight-track soon after that. But uh, the, all the computer stuff is... I, I feel like I just missed out. Like it seems like a lot of young musicians now really have their handle on the production side of things, which is fantastic. But I am, I always consider myself kind of an idiot savant guitar player. Mm -hmm. Like I can, I can rip some guitar, but I, I can even fix a guitar, you know, like I was going to mention earlier when you were talking about where you've recorded your albums and not that people shouldn't go to studios, but I want to say you're the first person I've talked to on this podcast that hasn't recorded their own release. Yeah. Uh, so it's, it's actually kind of like you just said, it's, it's actually kind of a rare thing when you run into somebody that has, was like, we recorded it at a studio. Yeah. You know, like, and, and the value I find in it, in it too, is that like, for me, um, I always, I always get stuck somewhere along the way, like recording things myself, or there's that just having a producer or someone to just expedite things and having mm -hmm. deadlines and just things like that to, to expedite just to fast track stuff mm -hmm. really help the productivity of having like getting things done. Um, so that was really valuable in, in that instance. Whereas we, I've tried home recording forever and it just never, it never gets anywhere. And a lot of that is just, me being my own boss and my own knowledge of that, but even, even working amongst a group of people, it just never could get across the finish line. So I just started seeing uh, the value in, in the studio because it, it kind of forced your hand to, to push something out there, you know? Yeah. For us, it's a different thing because the DAW is the secret hidden fifth member of the band. Like we write in the DAW, like we'll have an idea and then we'll kind of build from that and go, oh, but what if that was this? And what if we took that sound and got rid of the other? Th like, it's really us working inside it. And like, we don't start out with a song and jam it and go, here's an idea. It's really just, oh, I played this little line on the on the keyboard. And then it's like, what if it did this? And what yeah, it, you know, yeah. it really builds from that's that's the way we write. We don't go like jam it and like, go. let's do this a couple of times. It's an entirely different thing for us. So it's really... I don't know how we would do a song if we just sat down and wrote it. No, that's not true. We've got a couple. That makes it sound like we have no capability of oh, no, <laughs> just sitting down and writing a song. But, uh, but yeah, the, in the uh, so if you go in there and then you make the album, you're spending money on it. So what are you doing after you've released an album? Like what kind of stuff are you doing to promote it and get the word out and kind of get listeners and all that kind of stuff to where you're, you know, to the album you just made? Well, I feel like uh, one one thing is um, I just release a lot leading up to it. We'll uh, kind of leak since since everyone, you know, we're into the shorter and shorter kind of attention span when it comes to like media. Uh, you know, we got the reels on Instagram or the shorts or whatever on YouTube, and yeah, just little bite sized stuff. So I I just try to leak out the album song by song. I feel like mm -hmm. every two weeks ends up being a good, you know, benchmark because that's when it kind of drops off a little bit. A week's a little short. Um, and just leak each song as a single 
up until releasing the album. So you kind of just get constant uh, stuff out there, constant content, uh, constant eyes on stuff. I don't like, personally, I don't like manufacturing stuff or reposting or doing a lot of stuff. I just want to have new things to put out there. Mm -hmm. So in the case of like a five or a six song EP, you know, that gives you about a month and a half worth of like stuff. And and then the album at the end, that's like two months worth of build up up to the album. Like to do an EP release show with some good bands. I have found a lot of trouble with marketing after the fact the album's art album is out. I need to like work on maybe packaging some more stuff to videos and stuff to put out there afterwards. I've seen some friends who are really good at that. Um, I, uh, like I said, that's, that's where the social media flaws I have kind of come through again is, is a little bit after the album's released, it kind of dips off a little bit and you kind of just hope you get some sustain with all that build up too, you know, that you're constantly getting eyes on stuff, but yeah. The, you mentioned earlier, uh, the one band, which I called cargo or cocaine cargo pants, but it's dusty lemons. Yeah, yeah. Um, you said that they don't do merch. Do you do merch with the other bands? Yeah, we, uh, we have some shirts for no robot. We've been getting in, we got these, uh, really great PBR shirts. Um, I saw those. Yeah. Yeah. Those are, those are excellent. And then we got like some posters that we don't have for sale yet for our, like 10 year anniversary show where a uh, friend Natalie Roseman did like a, a take on the album art from my decline. Hmm. And we will be having these for sale uh, during our show and afterwards. Um, and then in Escape Rope, we're looking to get some more shirts and stuff. Um, we went through Modest Merch for those PBR No Robot shirts. They do great work. Okay. Um, there's also Meltdown in town. Meltdown Creative Works here in Bloomington does a great job. And they were uh, they were throwing shows for, for a while, too. I think they're hoping to resume, but um, currently, temporarily, no shows there right now. So. Hmm. And what kind of stuff do you have coming up or things in the future that are coming out you'd like to tell people about? Well, we have that uh, Escape Rope EP. I think we're going to call it the Canto EP because uh, all the names from that band are borrowed from Pokemon. Um, <laughs> 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 we're, we're playing a place uh, called – because besides seeing Heaving, that was one of the bands we, we really wanted to play with and, and get some of our sound after, like what they were doing. Um, we did get to play with Heaving in a garage on my birthday a couple weeks ago. It was it was awesome. Those guys are great. Hmm. Um, but we were at a show in Mount Moon, and uh, I was like, man, you should get a band here uh, called Escape Rope to play here. And he's like, that's a great band name. And then I just kind of logged that away, and, you know, it's uh, worked out with this band. But uh, Canto EP should be out. Uh, I think we're going to release on Halloween. Um, nice. This year, yeah singles to be probably coming out the end of july early august uh no robot 10 year anniversary show is let me make sure i get this date right i think we got it on here august 3rd at six strings here in bloomington with all right foe bury thy wicked monarch dylan Carricker, emceed by our friend bigelow t um Dusty Lemons, hopefully um, those guys get out of jail soon. They went to jail for tax evasion, of all things. You know, not used to making money, those guys. Um, hopefully they'll be released and be releasing an EP sometime this year as well. Okay. Or at least be thrown out a single or something. And uh, I, I might be looking to try to do a solo EP at some point this year, too. Just something real really? lo-fi. That I might try to record myself because I don't... I don't really right. have a standard for what it should sound like, but I want to get some stuff out there that I don't know if it'll work with, uh, with, uh, other things. Also, actually, I, uh, there's a band, a bigger band from around here called Otis. Um, and I've been playing with some of the guys that used to play in that band and we're starting a band called machine shed. And then we're also me and the bass player from that band were, uh, having a little bit of a duo band together too. So a lot of, a lot of stuff coming up. Don't even have a name for some of that stuff, but we're working on songs and it's coming together real nice. So excited for that. Also night shop open mics or night. Yeah. Night shop open mics, Monday nights. Oh, I've been see seeing me. those flyers that you've been posting. Yeah. That's okay. Fun. 
Also, so this, I was recommended to talk to you from uh, Stefan Robinson and he's in eight bands. And when I said, what more are you doing? He's like, but I'm also thinking of doing this. Is there just something in the air down where you live that each of you have to have a minimum of like 13 projects going on at the exact same time? What the hell? (laughs) (laughs) <laughs> that could be explained. It. There's, there's definitely something in the air because my sinuses are going nuts. <laughs> Not sure if that's what you mean, but uh, no. Yeah, no. I mean, it's honestly the music scene around here is amazing. Like, there's, there's a good towny scene. The, the college scene is unbelievable. Mm-hmm. Um, there's this kid from around here, Harrison Gordon, who's really breaking through, going on tour now. Um, just playing massive shows and so many good college bands, so many good local bands, so many good musicians. I mean, like, you'd be a fool not to be in 12 bands around here. You know, you're missing out. Yeah. All right. Well, if people wanted to check out more of your stuff, I mean, I guess <laughs> name some places that they should go to minimize so that they'll remember where to go to. Yeah. Uh, Facebook, Instagram, uh, you know, YouTube and, and Spotify, anywhere you stream music, you'll, you'll be able to find No Robot and soon Escape Rope. Uh, Dusty Lemons you can find in the, in the scummiest back alleys you'll ever see. <laughs> but uh, they're really nice guys, so don't worry about them. All right. And I want to thank you so much for talking with me today. This has been great. Yeah, man. Thanks for having me. It's been fun.